welcome back. Today we are going to get this power steering mocked up. Um, hopefully I can get most of it in. I don't know if I'm going to get the cooler all the way in yet, but I'll at least show you when it comes time, at least where to mount. Uh, this here is the Chase Bay power steering reservoir. Um, I got it with a 10 AN feed suction line and a 6 AN return line. So it comes uh, with a little mounting bracket, if you will, already had welded to it. So I've been playing with places to mount it around, but uh, Ashley and I have kind of decided that it'll probably sit about there. Uh, that way it's very easy accessible when you're in front of the engine. It looks nice, and then when I have my decorative plate over it, it'll cover basically all of this except for just the cap. You'll be able to get to the cap, but the rest of it will be gone. So, I'm going to run lines, obviously, from the 10 AN first to the pump, and then we'll go from the pump down to the reservoir, or to the rack and pinion of the steering. So, let's see how it turns out. Welcome back. So we are still working on the power steering lines. Currently, the power steering cooler is sitting here. I have made the end, put the end on this one fitting. This will be routed to the power steering or uh, the rack and pinion here. And then we'll make another line that'll go from the other side of the cooler up to the reservoir. So. Um, right now, it is tr figuring out the best routing and the fitting to go on that, and then uh, making finishing making this line, and then starting to figure out the next line. installed I showed that a little before uh, the lines are not tight because I still want to maneuver them get some clamps on there but coolers in lines are made and routed um, I'll end up drilling a hole or something like that and I'll put a clamp here to hold those lines in I've got an existing hole that was Swiss cheese from the inner fenders when got the truck um, so I'm gonna use that utilize that hole and put another clamp there to hold that line uh, we've got them going into the steering rack um, and I'll figure out those and then of course got the feed line going to the pump and then the pressure side going down into the rack. So power steering done, checked off the list and uh, just got some final touches we got to do to it which probably won't see until the end but uh, nonetheless some minor stuff just to do and power steering's done we move on to the next however I will say this if you're tackling a big project and that one thing I will tell you at least works for me or works for us is that when you're building a whole truck it's very easy or car or whatever it's very easy to get overwhelmed as to how much 
you have to do, what needs to be done. And that's where, at least for me, in that it, I can get defeated on wanting to work on it, just selling it outright because there's just too much going on. I don't have time, I don't have money. So what I do, take it, take it as you will, is I work on one system at a time. It doesn't matter. Pick something in that. You want to work on the front suspension? Just focus on front what you need for the front suspension. Get that done, and then you work on the next. So in this case, I worked on power steering. I worked on cooling first, got all that set up, and now I've worked on power steering. Power steering's done, minus some minor tweaks I got to do. Uh, the next thing we will do is cut the hole for the charge air cooler to go through. Um, get that kind of set up and get those pipes going. But my next big option or big project that I'm going to tackle is the fuel system all the way from the tank all the way forward. I've got the return line kind of just loosely back there. I will finally put that together nicely and get all this set up. But tackling your project in just small sections I think just helps out. You just focus on the one small section that you want to work on and you get that one done and then you pick your next small section. So don't try to try to do everything all at once or think of it as a big project, just small steps. So take it as you will. See you next time. Um, we are working on the charge air pipes for this side, the passenger side. Um, we have the one kind of just sitting here. Um, not even sure if we're really gonna use this, but it was just one that just was already done and fit. So we put that one in just because, and then it's just gonna be making another pipe going into the turbo. So because of this body line, and because I mounted the turbo and it's a pain in the butt, um, I didn't want to remove the turbo to drill from this side or from the inside out. So in this case, we went from the outside in, but it took a little bit to get it marked for the angle and everything else. So we cut it small, but this was done by a plasma cutter. We just took a piece of one of the holes that we cut up front and put it up here kind of at an angle and then take some, took some soapstone and marked around it and then cut on the inside of those marks to see how this thing would sit. So we're gonna have to cut a little more out on either side to make sure that this comes out, but the pipe will basically come out and then go straight into this. Um, it will not get into the tire unless, of course, we have a blowout, but if that's the case, we got bigger problems. So um, next is to continue modifying this until we get it kind of happy um, with where we wanted. If you do go this route of doing it this way, take a welding blanket and cover all your vitals in there. We did that so that nothing gets burned. Um, because again, I ain't pulling that dang turbo unless I have to. Um, yep, we'll keep after it.